Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this presentation. I'm really happy to introduce our lab's research. My name is Tony Ja. I am an associate PI at the Earth Life Science Institute, LC, at Tokyo Institute of Technology, and also a research investigator at Blue Marble Space Institute of Science. So today I'll be talking a little bit about membraneless protocells at the origin of life. And in particular, our lab is really interested in understanding and answering the question of how these membraneless protocells could have contributed to the origins of life. A little bit about myself. So I'm from the US. I studied um, proteins and lipids. I did research on those topics uh, for my bachelor's degree uh, at Caltech. And then for my PhD degree at Harvard, I studied DNA and RNA. And these questions led me to really be curious about how biomolecules emerged and evolved in the first place, which led me to my current institute, LC, uh, from 2017. And since 2022, we've opened our lab at LC. And in our lab, uh, we have a number of different questions that we're interested in, including, you know, what the first cells on Earth were made of, uh, how they assembled, what primitive chemistries were relevant, how, you know, membraneless droplets could have acted as protocells and how these protocells could have derived function. And to that end, we study a few different systems uh, related to membraneless protocells. Uh, and you, you can check out uh, our, our lab information for that. Uh, in particular, I want to talk to you about polyester protocells, which were proposed and discovered in uh, our lab with some collaborators a few years ago. We actually found that if you took uh, hydroxy acid monomers, which are very abundant on early earth, and you dry them, they actually produce polyesters. And these polyesters, upon further dilution, can result in assembly of micro droplets. These micro droplets are membraneless, and they can you know, um, segregate various molecules, such as dyes or proteins. We also found that increasing the chemical diversity of the monomer library, such as by adding a cationic monomer, resulted in cationic poly polymers that could assemble into cationic micro droplets, which were able to segregate RNA quite strongly due to the electrostatic interaction between the cationic polyesters and the anionic um, RNA backbone. Since then, we've also made uh, other research progress. For example, last year, uh, one paper from our lab proposed these polyester-based uh, structures as possible gel-based panspermia seeds. And our recent, most recent paper this year uh, showed that droplets can actually preferentially and differentially uptake different salts. These salts, for example, sodium chloride or uh, calcium chloride, potassium chloride, absorbed to the surface of the droplets, which resulted in droplet coalescence. So this could have been one mechanism by which these primitive polyester micro droplets or protocells, you know, coalesced and grew in different environments on early years. So of course, if you're interested in uh, learning more or reading more details about some of these studies, which I've mentioned, um, we, we have a list of, list of references. And I also provide some lab publications since 2019. So you get a sense of the different topics we study and in case you're interested in reading any of those in further detail. Finally, I'd also like to thank everyone who's made this research possible, in particular, um, everyone at both of my institutes, LC and BMSIS, different funding sources, including from JSPS, from the Japan Astrobiology Center, Tokyo Institute of Technology, and also the Mizuho Foundation for the Promotion of Science, current and former lab members, and of course, uh, all of our collaborators around the world um, which you can see listed here. Uh, if you have any other further questions, please feel free to contact me anytime. And especially if you're interested in collaborating or working with us, please let us know anytime. Thanks so much for your time. And I hope you enjoyed this talk.